Welcome back. This is Sandy with Sandy's Organized Chaos. And today we're going to be doing this really cute, super fun fabric tumbler with a chocolate drip top. As always, I'll make sure to put everything into the description box down below so that you guys can find it and shop these items if you would like to. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And let's wake up, prep those tumblers, and slay all day. Let's do this. The tumbler that I'm going to be using today is a 30 ounce skinny and I purchased that through the Stainless Depot company. I've already prepped this tumbler and I wiped it down really good. You want it nice and dry before we add our fabric to it. Now the fabric that I'm using today I have purchased through Custom Tumbler Cut and she has quite an array of just beautiful fabrics that you can use that are already cut to size for any tumblers that you want to use them for. They are made out of a stretchy cotton fabric, which is awesome whenever you want to wrap those curved tumblers. This is a great material to use for that. But this material right here was called Waffle Snacks. If you wanna hop on there and get yourself a piece of this fabric, it is so cute. And I thought it went really well with the drips that I added on top. All right, now I have already done a tutorial on how to wrap a tumbler with fabric, so I'll make sure to put that at the top. If you guys want to check that out, it's just fabric related and how to do that, but I am going to briefly kind of go over exactly how to do this process. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to get your fabric all sized up. You just want to wrap it around here. Now there's a little bit of a curve at the bottom of this tumbler, but I'm not too worried about it because we'll make it work in the end once we add all of our glue and everything like that. So I'm just going to kind of cut it down to size here and make sure that it's going to fit and have just a little bit of a flap left over for us to kind of trim after we apply it to the tumbler. Now to apply it to the tumbler, I have my little makeup brush that I gotten from the dollar store here. I have my little epoxy dish here and I have my Mod Podge and that's how we are going to make this stick to our tumbler. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this tray up with Mod Podge because we need a lot of Mod Podge. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and fill this thing up. Then the next thing you want to do is you just want to take your brush and you want to fully coat your tumbler with your Mod Podge. You want to make sure that it's nice and saturated with this glue. So basically what I do is all I do is just take one round of glue, slap it on the best that I can, and then I come back through a second time and I just kind of smooth anything out and I kind of add a second layer over top of this first layer just to make sure that everything is still nice and wet, nothing has dried, and making sure that there are no peaks and valleys in the glue. Then the next thing you wanna do is just simply lay your fabric down, making sure it's in the proper direction that you needed to go into. <laughs> you don't wanna accidentally put it on the wrong way, okay, upside down or something. But it's, it's easy just to peel it off if that happens and then just stick it back on. It'll be fine if that happens, but I'm just saying, just, just make sure. <laughs> Now I could have brought that fabric all the way up to the top, but I didn't mind that there was some of that silver showing because I'm gonna add some drips to the top anyway, so it didn't matter to me if my top was even. But if you don't plan on adding drips, just make sure that your fabric is all the way up to the top. And then you just wanna take your hand and smooth everything out, making sure that glue gets deep down inside of that fabric. Now I'm just kind of showing you here that I did leave a little bit of a flap and that's okay because we're gonna trim that up, not a big deal. Now I let mine kind of rest for about an hour and then I came through and I just trimmed up the bottom. I just made just a nice straight line right around the bottom. You just want to use your sharpest X-Acto knife or a razor blade and just trim up everything, making it nice and straight. And you want to come through and trim off that tail along the back as well. Now that I have everything all trimmed up, now's the time we're going to come through and we're going to do another coat of that glue, that Mod Podge, right on top of this fabric to make sure that it is fully sealed and that epoxy won't get up inside of there when we go to apply it and make those slick spots that could occur if we don't properly put our Mod Podge on on this round. Now this round is very important with this Mod Podge. You really wanna make sure it's very well saturated with this glue so that way those slick spots won't occur. And if you don't know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about slick spots, it's 
if you don't properly put your glue on and it will make these dark rings underneath your fabric and we don't want that because this is a lot of hard work so i want to make sure that you guys do this properly so that way that doesn't happen once i have this fully saturated what i like to do because this glue is non-toxic it, it's safe to touch okay guys what i like to do is take my finger and rub my finger up and down the tumbler making sure that that glue just kind of squeezes in between those woven fabrics and really get in there and make sure everything is nice and stuck down and this is the time too that if i do this and any kind of extra glue kind of squeezes out i will take that off as well you just want to make sure it's as smooth as possible and as saturated as possible with your glue now another a very important step is making sure that this tumbler is all the way dry before you apply your epoxy what I will do is I will make these up at night. I will let it sit overnight just to make sure that it is fully dry before I apply my epoxy. Because if you don't let make sure that it's fully dry before you add your epoxy, the epoxy will turn a milky white color and we don't want that either. Okay, here she is the next morning and she is ready to have a glittered bottom put on. <laughs> I am using Orchid and this pretty lavender color that I purchased through Christy Taylor Creations. I'll make sure to put her in the description below as well. Now you can either spray paint this, you can paint it, use acrylic paints, however you want to do it. Just make sure that you tape off the bottom here. See, as I kind of fumble through it here. <laughs> But I am just going to use my paint as the glue to stick my glitter on to my tumbler so that way I don't have to spray paint it, then put glue on it, and then put my glitter on. So we're just going to do it all in one step here. It's as easy as that. You want to make sure that you shake up these paints really well. They are a little bit watery, but that's the whole point of them. They're kind of a chalk paint. And I'm actually going to do one little quick layer here. It dries really fast. And then I'm going to add a second little coat of this paint right on top. And then I'm going to sprinkle on my glitter. Now, right after I apply my glitter here, I'm going to go ahead and remove the, the tape right away. And then I'm going to let that dry probably for about 30 minutes. It really didn't take too long for this to dry. And then we'll be ready to add our first coat of epoxy over top of our fabric drip tumbler. Now, once that dried, I went outside and I gave it a nice coating of my Two Times Ultra Spray by Rust-Oleum just to make sure those glitters on the bottom didn't kind of move around. Although I did add a little bit of cheat glitter into my epoxy, which I'll show you here in a second. I am going to be using Amazing Quick Coat Epoxy, which dries super duper fast. So I am obsessed with this stuff. I know I've talked about it before. I absolutely love it. And I'm, I put a little bit of iridescent in there, which is from my Pixie Dust line as well. I just wanted to give it a little bit extra sparkle. So that's why I did that. But I do have a 10% off code down below if you guys would like to check out this Quick Coat Epoxy by Illumilite. Now I'm going to go ahead and put that on my turner and I'm going to let that dry for about six hours and then we'll be ready to move on to the next step. It's been six hours and we are ready to add our drips. Now here is my tumbler. I, I, there we go. There it is. How pretty. I am so obsessed with this fabric. It is so cute. I cannot wait to take a drink out of it and maybe go to Disney with it. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Now for the drips, I'm gonna be using just a basic brown acrylic paint, and I'm also adding just a little bit of this caramel brown from Arteza, it's a mica powder, just to kind of make it have just a little bit more of like that chocolate feel to it. It has kind of like an iridescent flow to it once it's applied to the tumbler. Now for the drips, I am using amazing Quick Coat Epoxy as well for the drips. Okay, we're using the Quick Quick dry epoxy for this so you, you kind of got to move fast now i'm kind of showing you guys you want to be careful with the amount of product you put into your epoxy because it could affect the way your epoxy cures and we don't want that so what i like to do is add a couple drips at a time of everything until i get the color that i like and stop you don't want to add too much because it could make it not cure properly and you definitely don't want that now, my fabulous stirring tool I got from the dollar store. That's uh, just a Betty Crocker spatula. You know, you want to stir it with the best things you have around. And I just got that from the dollar store. It, it works well. So I'm just saying. <laughs> so all in all, the thicker your epoxy, the faster it's going to set. 
and it took between 15 and 20 minutes for it to become nice and thick the way that I like it. And what I do is I just keep coming back and checking it. I let it run off my spatula and then I wipe it right onto the side of the cup to see if I like the consistency that it's at. And you will start to feel that chemical reaction whenever you pick this up. It will become very hot and you will start to know that it is becoming thicker by the minute. Now I'm being very serious when I say this, don't walk away because it literally will be fine one, one minute and then turn to absolute goop the next minute. So you have to know exactly when that proper time is for yourself to start adding it to your tumbler. Now I switched over to my, my uh, little water slide spatula here again from the dollar store and you can see how much thicker that is now on the side of my cup and I know that it's pretty much ready to add to my tumbler. And before I forget, I got this in the same section you would get the makeup brush for the glue. It was in, it was in the makeup section, okay guys? And I'm talking about the little rubber spatula thing that I'm using because you'll see in a second why I love this thing so much when I go to do drips. Again, this was between 15 and 20 minutes for me. And I zoomed in so you guys can see the consistency that it is on the side of my cup. Look at that. That's perfect. That's exactly what you want. It doesn't drip too fast, but it doesn't, it doesn't drip too slow. It's just the right consistency. Now we are ready to start adding it to our tumbler. Now I'm going to kind of be showing you guys two different angles. I'm going to be showing you from the top to begin with because it's pretty simple when you apply it. You know, you know what it looks like dripping down the tumbler, but I want you guys to see that if you do it this way, you won't get it inside the tumbler, which I think a lot of people have a, an issue with. So what you want to do is you want to take a bunch on your little spatula. You want to scrape off one side so it's nice and clean on one side. Then you just want to take your spatula and completely swipe it right across just like that and you want to let it drip down your tumbler and you want to move as fast as possible because we're in between that that zone where one minute it's fine and the next minute it's going to turn to goop so you want to work as fast as possible completely around your tumbler making sure you hold it up and down so that way those drips go straight down and not off to the side if you happen to be holding it at an angle you also want to take a moment to notice if they seem like they're maybe dripping down too fast. So you just want to simply take your cup, you want to flip it upside down and make sure you kind of stop that process in between doing all your drips. And you just want to keep doing this completely around your tumbler. Then we're going to come through and add a kind of a second layer over top this first layer just to make sure that everything is nice and coated. And again, if you notice, I am barely getting anything up on that rim. So if you do it this way, this is this is hopefully how it should look. I mean, if not, it's okay. It's a learning process, okay, guys? But I know you guys got this. All right, I hurried up and I moved my camera down so you guys could see a side view of it as I add the second layer on. As you could see, I just wanted a little bit more thickness around those drips, just a little bit more. I, I didn't want it too thick in some spots and you, as you can see it's almost to that point where it's too goopy to apply so you can see there's those little strings that come off of it so you got to be careful as you're working and I'm just moving as fast as possible just trying to make sure that my drips are nice and thick around the rim here okay once I got my drips applied it really didn't move too much so I, I don't really know the reason for my little sped up here I did kind of do my torch on it just a little bit to kind of flatten out some of those little areas where those little strings kind of laid down onto my epoxy just to kind of flatten it out just a little bit <laughs> Now you could absolutely leave it as it is. It looked really cool as it was, but I wanted to add a little bit of sprinkles and I wanted to add some more little mouse heads to it because I just thought they were adorable. And these are new items that are gonna be available in my shop. So if you'd like to get these little neon ears or the sprinkles, they're available at socglitters.com. But if not, that's perfectly fine too. <laughs> Now when working with sprinkles and all that, I just kind of drop them on with my finger and then I end up coming through kind of with my knife and just kind of placing them because especially with those skinnier drips down, down the side, you want to make sure that there's nothing kind of sticking up or poking out too much. So I just come through with my knife and I just kind of randomly place things as I would like them around those drips and it's as easy as that. All right, now whether you apply your sprinkles, whether you don't apply your sprinkles, you definitely wanna make sure that you let it cure for at least six hours. And I like to apply another coat of epoxy 
over top of this after it has cured just to make sure that all those little sprinkles really set in and make sure they don't fall off or anything like that when I go to use it. Now it's been six hours and I'm gonna clean up my rim really well, which there really isn't too much to clean up because we were really careful with it, right? We were careful. <laughs> Now with these last two coats, I'm gonna make sure that I come through with my amazing ClearCast, ClearCast Plus, there we go, because it has that UV resistant in it, so that way it doesn't turn yellow in the sunlight over the summer. We don't want that, right? <laughs> I'm gonna let that cure the proper amount of time and she is good to go. Whether you take this design and duplicate it as is, or you take it and let it inspire you to create something that is completely your own, I hope that you guys had a lot of fun watching this tutorial today. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys next time.